this lecture, we will work a problem in which we will add a new partner to an existing partnership. In a prior lecture, we talked about having a partnership sell a partnership interest to another partner. So one partner leaves, another partner comes in. In this section, we will talk about having the same partners there and then adding a new partnership. So the question will be here. This will give us the information. We're going to put that information into a worksheet like so, populating the blue areas. We will then record the journal entry in this section on this blue area here with the debits and the credits for the journal entry. We're then going to post that to a quick worksheet here so that we can see what happens in context in relation to some other accounts being cash, assets, liabilities, equity. This is where we're going to focus because, of course, the equity part of a partnership is the partners. So we got the partners here, their capital accounts. Then we have revenue and expenses. In this worksheet, we could see that we are in balance by the assets or the, the debit balance accounts and not having brackets or being positive numbers for Excel minus the credits means that they add up to zero. So the debits minus the credits equal zero, therefore we're in balance. It's gonna be a quick way for us to see and analyze what happens within context. We will then post our information here and see what happens to the Indian child balance as we go. We also have the accounting equation over here, so we can take a look at that. Assets equal liabilities plus the equity and see what changes happen to the accounting equation as we work through this problem. All right, so we've got the partnership as a new partner. Well, first let's take a look at the ratio. So we have the original partners being M, B, and L. They share their partnership um, profit and loss with a three to five ratio. So first thing we wanna do is break out that three to five ratio we might be thinking, why don't we just call it percentages? And there could be some situations where percentage is not exactly even and a ratio is more precise. Therefore, uh, ratios can be a good way to post this information or record this information. We need to know how to convert this ratio format to some type of percentage. So the way to do that, I'm gonna go over here to M and we're gonna say that this equals M's portion, which is three out of the total, three plus two plus five is 10. So divided by, we can even do that by divided by three plus two plus five. So three over 10, three divided by 10, 30. And we, if we wanna make that a percent, we can go to the home tab, we can go to the numbers group, we can percentify it to 30%. B gets two out of the total of 10. So we can say that equals two over the total of three plus two plus five. And that will equal, I forgot the divide sign divided by, and that will equal 20%. And if we go to the home tab, numbers group percent, make that a percentage. And then L of course has five out of 10. So we're gonna say this equals uh, five divided by uh, the three plus two plus five brackets. That will give us 50%. Once again, we can go to the home tab, numbers and percentify that. And then if we add these up, the 30 plus the 20 plus the 50, 100 if we total that up in the total column that'll verify that we are at hundred percent equals sum gonna sum up or add up these three columns the 30 plus the 20 plus the 50 will add up to one yeah because we need to fix the cell and put that to hundred so we're gonna go to the home tab numbers and 100 percent so it happens to work out evenly a three to five ratio means that we're having 30 percent m 20 percent b uh, 50% L. Now what we want to do is implement or add R to the partnership. So R is going to come into the partnership and R is going to get, we agreed on, the partnership agreed on, we should say, that 25% interest to R in exchange for R paying the partnership $140,000. So R is going to pay $140,000 and uh, we are going to give, the partnership is going to give R a 25% interest. So let's see what that will look like. So before we post any more of this worksheet, let's take a look at what we have in terms of a chart of accounts over here. So if we look at the chart of accounts, we, we are seeing that we're gonna put R basically on the books, R's paying cash. So if we start to think about the journal entry, we could say, well, our first question is always, is cash affected? Yeah, that's affected. We know that's gonna do something to cash. So cash is going up for the partnership because the partnership is receiving cash. And so we're gonna copy the cash and cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make cash go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So that much we know, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that on top in our journal entry. We're gonna say we're gonna debit cash in. 
I46, right click, paste the one, two, three, not here, paste the values only. And then of course, we said that the partner is going to pay the partnership 140,000. So the partner is gonna uh, pay the partnership 140,000. Who's the partner that is, is uh, coming into the partnership? R, R is the new partner. So we would need to increase R's capital account in order to allow R into the partnership. So we know that we're gonna credit R's capital account because R is gonna have, if R is paying and, and being implemented a 25% interest, we need to increase the capital account. So uh, capital accounts, you can see all have credit balances. We need to go make it go up. We're gonna do the same thing to it, which is another credit. So we know we're gonna credit R's capital. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it right here in I-47, right click and paste one, two, three. Now we know it's gonna be a credit, but the trick is that we not, we're not sure it's gonna be 140,000 because the problem said we're gonna give a 25% interest for uh, the 140,000. Therefore, what we need to do is figure out what is a 25% interest in the partnership. And we know that the total equity represents assets minus liabilities. So the, the, in this case, the cash of 550 minus the uh, liability of 10 is of course 540 equals the equity of 540. So you would think that at this point in time, a 25% interest would be 540,000 times 0.25, 25% interest. So you would think we'd put them on the book at 135, but we have to add to that the fact that there's cash. Cash came in on top of this. So cash is gonna go up, which increases the book value. So let's think about that in terms of our worksheet over here, try to see what we need to record in terms of the capital account for R. So if we think about what we have so far, this is our total capital. This is what's recorded on the trial balance for capital for M, B, and L partners. And we know that another 140,000 is going to be implemented into the partnership when R comes into the partnership. Therefore, the capital account the net assets are gonna go up by, of course, 140. Therefore, we're gonna add this up. We're gonna say this equals the original net value of the partnership plus the 140,000 that the new partner is now implementing gives us a total of 680,000. Then we're gonna say that's now the new value of the partnership and we are now adding the new partner at 0.25, 25%. We're gonna give a 25% of the book value or the total equity section which represents the book value of the company to the new partner. So 25% if we want to see that in the form of a percent, of course, home tab, uh, numbers group, and percentage. And that means that the new partner needs to be on the books at this uh, 680 times the 25%. So the new partner is going to be on the books at 170. So that's the answer to this question over here. We're gonna put the new partner on the books at a credit negative in this worksheet, 170,000. All right, so there we have that. Now, of course, we have this other issue in that the debit doesn't equal the credit. <laughs> so the uh, credit is higher than the debit by 30,000. And the reason for that is, of course, if, if we're gonna put the new partner on the books for 170 and they only paid 140, then the other three partners are going to have to split the difference. So we're going to have to have a debit of 30000 What account will that 30000 go to? Well, it's going to go to M, B, and L. Do they necessarily like this, uh, tr this situation? No, because their capital accounts are going to go down. We're going to debit their capital accounts, reducing their capital accounts because they basically are giving more of their interest to R than what R is paying. Now you might be thinking, why? Why would why would they do this? Why would they allow uh, R to have a 170% interest when R only paid 140? Why wouldn't they make you know the, that even out? And the reason there could be multiple reasons for it. Maybe we're, the partnership is thinking that not all the assets are represented uh, properly, really within the the financial statements. There could be intangible assets or liabilities that aren't really represented in terms here. It could also be that uh, they think that R is, is coming in to the partnership with a lot of their own personal assets that will increase revenue in the future and therefore it is worth 
uh, allowing R on the books and giving a, a larger portion of the interest than R is paying into the company because of the potential future growth just based on who R is. And, and that could be a reason as well. But in any case, that's what's going to happen. And therefore, we're going to have to reduce these capital accounts for the other three partners. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it in accordance with their profit sharing ratios, which we decided were 30, 20, and 50. So we decided that we're going to have to allocate the difference. So I'm going to calculate that difference again. We're going to say this equals the, I'm going to do it this way, the 170 that we're going to allocate to the new partner R minus the 140 that R put into the partnership, which gives us that 30,000 that we're going to have to reduce the existing capital counts by for M, B, and L. So we're going to do that through this percentage ratio. So we're in here for M, we're going to take that 30,000 times M's 30% tab. So we're going to reduce uh, M's by 9,000. And then for B, we're going to say this equals the 30,000 times the 20% for B. So we're going to reduce B's capital count by six. And then for L, we're going to say the 30,000 times the 50% and enter we're going to reduce his capital count by 15 if we add those up adds up to the 30. so this is how we're going to reduce that 30. that's the plug that we need for our journal entry so let's calculate what the new capital count will then be we know that r is going to be on the books for 25 percent which we said was the 170 over here so this is just the 170 and then m is going to be on the books for their current capital account minus the part of that 30,000 that they're going to have to eat in order to uh, bring R in. And we're going to say B's capital count is going to equal the 124.2 minus B's portion, 6,000 of that 30,000 they're going to have to eat. And then we're going to say that L is going to equal the original of 264.6 minus the 15,000 at the 50% that uh, L is going to have to eat. And therefore, this is going to be our new allocation if we add those up it's going to add up to 680 so i'm going to sum this up and add these up here and that should add up to 680 so at the end of the day after we post our journal entries r should be on the books at uh, 170 m should be on the books at 142.2 b 118.2 and l 249.6 let's see if that's what happens when we do this so we're going to go back to our journal entry and we'll post our journal entries here. And we said we were left with these debits that need to happen, which was 30,000. We now know that we're gonna break that 30,000 out between M9, B6, L15. So I'm gonna say M, B, L. I'm just gonna copy all of them. I'm gonna highlight, right click, copy, put our cursor in uh, I48, right click, paste, one, two, three. Then for the debits, remember they have to be debits because we need more debits in order to make this balance. We're going to say this equals the 9 for M, enter, and this equals the 6 for B, enter, and this equals the 15, enter. So there's, this is going to be our journal entry. Is it in balance? Let's see. Well, the debits add up to 170. The debits minus the credits add up to zero. So we are in balance here. Now, note that also I... I have this credit up here and under uh, a perfect world we would like to have all the debits on tops and the credits on the bottom again i want to point out that if it helps you to either build the journal entry and or to go back and audit what you have done later on i would abandon the rule <laughs> of having debits and on top and the credits on the bottom however if you're putting this into a computer system into some kind of uh, system that's that's required to have it in that format or if you have someone that's very picky that's going to review the format then you may want to uh, put all the debits on top all right so let's post this out then we're going to post this over here and see if it does what we want it to do what do we want it to do or what do we expect it to do we expect these capital accounts to line up with this information here all right so we're going to post cash first i'm going to go to 046 i'm going to say this equals and point to that 140 that's a debit, this is a debit, it's gonna make the debit go up in the debit direction to the 690. We're then gonna post R's capital account, so here's R's capital account here, here's R's capital account here, here's the blue area related to R's capital account, and we're gonna say this equals and point to the 170, bringing the balance up from zero to 170. 
Then we're gonna post M's capital account. So here's M's capital account, here's M's capital account here. It's a credit, we're gonna debit it, that'll make it go down. So we're gonna say this equals the 9,000. That should make this go down to, uh, Thank you.